bacon. Let's get into it. For Kidden versus Renegades. Previous number one uh, up against a team that has taken names all the way from the last split, all the way from their very first entrance, but still hasn't got that number one just yet. A very difficult run all weekend long, but if you're going to establish yourself, might as well do it in the most immaculate fashion you possibly can. Get as much experience under your belt as a team. And well, take the biggest names along the way. Like I said, already taken down Riot Game and already taken down Ground <laughs> Zero Team Bliss. Renegades? Why not? This looks a lot like Renegades when they're on form with the passing plays, but will it be a continuation of their top form? Will they have brought it back, or is it just a slow start here for Forkidden? Well, Renegade's taken control here because it feels more like they've slowed it down a little bit. It's, while still fast Rocket League, because, you know, these are incredibly talented players, it's a little bit slower than what they could do, and that's them just keeping control. Knowing that speed probably favors for Kidman here. If you slow it down, their rotations might get a little bit clunky. I, I disagree to some extent. I know Renegades have always enjoyed playing Ground Zero in the past because Ground Zero was so much faster. I mean, everybody else in the in the region was slowing the ball down for Kidden at the time as well. Now for Kidden are playing fast. This might favor Renegades. That might make make them feel a bit more comfortable on the pitch as well. However, for Kidden should be coming in hot, and they still haven't created any real opportunities for themselves. That girl's created as well within the first one minute 45. Banana head not able to get the pass out towards Scrubbed as Kami. Puts it up high. Fever thinks better of his CJ. Launches it towards net. Wanted the 50. Wanted the block. Not able to get it. Scrub gets it to Banana. It really looked like CJ wanted a softer touch. He's trying to get a follow up on that play and end up slamming it towards the net. But you can see right now, Fakidden have done a lot of bunching up together. They're trying desperately to keep control of the ball, keep close to each other, a trust a lot. But that will open them up to some counter attacks from Renegades. It's a lot of whip from Renegades, but that does mean lose. There we go. Attacks can work. Oh. That is a great yeah. angle from Banana Head, and it's just following up for one of our plays of the day from yesterday. Banana Head off her backboard, it just doesn't seem like that is any trouble for the youngster. But for Banana to be an option there, that shows great signs of communication to go for the second hit, second bite of the cherry, if anything, for Kidden. They, they've spent the first two minutes, you know, seeing how Renegades are playing, coming into this one, and then they've struck. It's good to see CJ going for a flip reset too, because it's such a rare play that often the opponents don't play around it. And you saw there, for Kidden, weren't exactly expecting the flip reset to play, and that almost opened up the net for Renegades. I thought you were doing a little dig at CJ there for a moment. Oh, it's it is. too old to actually learn that one. <laughs> he's, he's brought them out a lot more this split. They've worked oh. on their mechanics, Renegades, and it's because of this guy. Fever brought mechanics to the front of this team. But it also takes a great pass like that over towards him. Keeping it simple in the grand scheme of things, but it's all about that precision, that quick, rapid one-two between the players to find the back of the net. Two minutes left to go. Don't worry if uh, Fakidden do get far behind. We'll see if their mental game is up to it because a lot of that last series they spent in a, a driver's seat, even just in terms of control of the game, whether if it wasn't control of the goals. Renegades in the centre here. We'll be looking for that follow-up touch from Fever, but not towards the net. In the past series, it was only game two really that Bliss took control. The rest of it was, like you said, for Kidden and. Even in that game too, it was super close. For Kinnon, don't mind waiting and responding. They're quick now. They have got the reaction speed to be able to make little adjustments like that. That is a corker. For Kinnon on the counter attack. 150, one pre-flip, two 50s, and but the hard ahead. He didn't even have to be a part of that play until then, so he's got wide open space to keep going. Clip it, slap it on Reddit, instant easy free karma for you because that is something else for Kidden. Keeping 
their streak, their run alive, their energy is high, the spirits are willing, and well, the boys are looking towards that grand final. What a demo! Oh, they're looking so aggressive. Now they've gained that confidence. It looked a little bit awry at the start of this game, but they were clearly just feeling it out. They're pushing forward now. They're getting the demos. You even saw, case in point, how they were willing to challenge Renegades right on top of their backboard. Um, if you're a Renegades fan, you could be a little bit nervy right now when goals like that don't even connect on through. It feels like the world is against you. And that just means they've got to buckle on in and persevere through the pain. Well, I think it's especially troubling for Renegades that it hasn't been just misses on the net. It hasn't been a mechanical problem that's costing them. For Kidden, they've just outplayed them in the midfield. They've out-aggressed them. Mm. They've been in better positions most of the time, and they're making Renegades make mistakes. And calls like that, where Lockie can get onto the ball to near enough I wouldn't say fake it, but to leave it for the second man is crazy confidence in each other, but then also the communication to call that out. Well, this is a play style from Fakidan that came out during event number two of the last split. Only for certain signs, they started challenging all of a sudden rather than sitting in their own net for most of the game. And you saw how powerful it could be then. They then took it and turned it into their core play style and got a second place in that last event. And now they're looking like they may be able to get a second place again minimum with this. It, it's like it's been brewing, you know, bubbling away underneath the surface in this play style where Yes, it came out strong and then they've held it back, you know, tried to work upon it. And now once again, having another crack at it and it's showing the grind that they've put in behind the scenes to really come out on top it is so commendable. And Fever having to get five saves, uh, that's a real problem for Renegades. The fact that he's usually getting left alone at the back as well. He's a player who likes kind of running backwards towards the net, shadowing the play a lot more, which would normally work, but for Kitten, they're getting these demos. What if I told you that the player with the highest number of saves, just in general across the previous, you know, splits, has been Fever? It's, that's yeah, not yeah, he is the defensive him. player on this roster. Yeah, but it's just he's used to averaging out 1.51, not 5. Yeah. You know, it's when that pressure is upon him, that gets a little bit too much, even for Fever. We need to see Kami uh, having more impact with his challenges, with his 50s, in order to allow Fever to have a bit more space. There's not much you can do in the 2v1 situation in positions where we're seeing for Kitten get into, where they're in that aggressive spot when they're close behind on Fever and they can get the bumps. Can for Kitten continue this? They get the first game and already a rough touch, and for Kitten will have an opportunity off the get-go. It's still scary. They pick up once again where they left off, looking to cement a lead as the Wolves put out wide. Banana gets a touch on it. CJ allows Kami to step on in, and Kami wanted to get a block scrub, reads it wrong. That's a push out towards center fever. Trying to get under his control, but Banana had to stop it. Beautiful. Fida did try and adjust there. He got the flip reset, saw that he can get the follow-up touch. So he actually tried to use it to get the bump. There was a bump in the midfield as well from Fakidden that almost left that open. Banana head with a shot. That's in! A bump in the midfield. It's opened up the net wide for Renegades. It's... It's... Trying to find the words to describe this because it just feels so really uncanny of how you could feel that one building. You could see that it was coming and you didn't want to believe in it because Renegades have been such a strong team over the past, well, forever. And right now, they've lost their hats. Like, they just don't have anything here. Well, you know what they call a blind deer? Go on. No idea. And that's what Renegades have right now. They're blind deers on the pitch. <laughs> they don't know what's going on. When are Forgidden going to hit the ball? When are they going to go for the demo? They're getting bamboozled. I mean, you're living up to your names. 
jokes like that, yummy, but for Kidden here trying to make this the for Kidden temple make this their statement that they are better than Renegades, that they are better than any other team within the region. They know Direwolves are waiting the Grand Finals. They think, and dare I say, they know they're a better team. This could be their regional, but Renegades, we've seen them weather the mightiest storms. Can they turn this around? There's still three minutes and 25 seconds on the clock, but they've got to dig that one out and do. But they have to be confident against Dire Wolves as well. I mean, the one time they lost in recent times to them, it was because of the, the internet Ooh. issues on day number one. They beat them in that event number three. They continually get better and better results against Dire Wolves. So they're maybe even thinking Renegades is our biggest opponents right now. But, I mean, that would potentially be a downfall because Direwolves have been so good today. Oh yeah, and especially since they would have to do it twice. Ah, oh, CJ just above the mark. Gets a touch there, not particularly what he wants is Banana. Gets that out and oh, CJ only just getting a touch out. I was sure Scrub was finishing that. Poor Kidden. Look how much time they're spending this forward half. And, oh no, that's a goal! Fever completely caught off guard by Scrub, and this has been a repeat over and over again. They're not expecting the cuts coming out. They're not expecting an angle like that either. Because surely Scrub's got to go and get boost at some point, but instead, no, he is just bull chasing that one, keeping on it, not letting it out of his reach, and it works. Renegades just cannot predict. Forget him right now. This has got to be the chance here that Renegades take advantage of. Fever got the right first touch, but it was off angle in terms of that bounce, and that's going to stop Renegades from having a chance. Uh, we need to see something quick from them. We need to see something good for them because they're starting to fall apart. Push towards center, CJ back towards Kami. Looking to build up a fantastic play, but Lockie got to it. Fever out towards the corner. You can see the kid in actually when it gets to the half are quite happy to just allow it to be oh. there, but slow it down. That was almost just in end to end and the the thing here is that for Kitten, are forcing speed. Renegades to play more aggressive. They're having to get them out of their normal or their, their current play style. They're making them feel off now. And that's not just going to affect them in the rest of this game. It's going to affect them the rest of the series. Yeah, when the super experienced, arguably best team within the region feels uncomfortable, have to change up their play style, you know you're doing something right if you're for Kitten. They are absolutely oh, going no. ham right now. A stars all around. Oh, this is looking very rough indeed. Renegades, we know that they're going to call the timeout after this game. Mm -hmm. They will 100% go for that one. And, well, they'll need it. I don't think they're taking this game back. And they need to take their mentality back very soon. Ooh. Okay, CJ just sneaks that one in as the camera cuts to it. Kami, nice little players downfield, and CJ just catches the back of Lucky. Okay. Sometimes you need just a little bit of luck. And also the fact that CJ always looked a little bit awkward in that aerial, and when he sp spun around, he's able to get a, a tight angle on that net. Made it much more difficult for Fakidden to actually defend, though. It's the first goal. It hasn't been a lot of opportunities for Renegades. It's still going to be tough to get this 40-second comeback, but it is possible. Kami's missed. Fever's not been blocked out as well. That was the opportunity for Renegades, and they've left it wanting. But Fever and CJ keep it in contention on the midfield line. Don't allow the runaway. Launch downfield. Connection with CJ, but no one will finish it off above the net. They can keep this aggression. Perhaps they'll be able to find something, but it's just not working out. Let 15 seconds to go. The Renegades have to make it right now with a pass, and that's too far. That's going to slow it down, mm -hmm. taking it to the wall. For Kitten have done it. They've got a two-game lead over the top of Renegades on a road to the grand final. Do Renegades pull out that timeout, like you said, Yummy is. Take a good look at Lucky. Knowing that this was probably a little bit more stressful, not as smiley as before, you can tell that they are respectful of what Renegades can supply. 
Uh, well, Fever bottom scoring this game. He wasn't able to find the saves and, well, none of them are able to find scoring opportunities, attacking opportunities. It's been so much controlled by Fakidden because they're challenging even when the ball is in that Renegade's corner. Renegades can't get it past a member. They're getting really solid 50s every single time and... They're, they're always making it so the pace of the defense has to be faster than Renegades is comfortable with. Kami's camera is shaking something fierce when he's <laughs> tapping his foot. That's nerves right there. When do you see the top teams pull out? Well, just have nerves straight up. I can give you context on that. Ka Kami is just a fidgeter. Yeah. I, mean, uh, I wouldn't right. hopefully look into that too much, but... Uh, there's definitely got to be some nerves here. I mean, they want to go back to the major. They have to go back to the major. And a third place puts a big stifle on that. And on the opposite end, Fever just looks like another day at the office. I don't think he's too fast. He mm -hmm. just looks a little bit, maybe downtrodden, but just looks a little bit like, all right, we just got, we just got to bring this back and forth. Easy, don't let them get the third. But that, again, was a very concrete example of how Forkidden are scary right now, how they are riding a wave of momentum and renegades after losing numerous games in a row. I'm, you know, after dropping 4-1, that's their fifth game in a row renegades have dropped. That does hit you mentally. I also want to point out, uh, Scrub is a player that I was really kind of worried about for a lot of the last split. He always felt like he was in a rough position and he always playing a much of man, more of a third man role. He may not even have top scored this game, but every single play, he was pushed so far forward. He was turning, he was cutting, he was outpacing. That is his role. He is the fastest player on for Kidden and he's even outpacing all of Renegades. Well, it comes down to for Kidden sort of having a full three man rotation to that, not feeling like you are always that third man it's instead that he just can utilize this sudden burst of pace to catch the opponents off guard but fever he's not catching banana off guard we'll see what renegades have done in this tactical timeout they've gone very very uh creative with that attack they pushed far so much farther forward than we saw from the entire previous series but they have to worry about these counter attacks it's open it's not in though it bounces high but there it goes scrub is the one to score well, being creative can be risky. They couldn't get themselves cemented in defense in time and for Kidden, by way of scrub their past by Banana, able to finish it off. Ouch. This is getting more dangerous too. You just have to look at the face mm. cam of Super Locky and see how comfortable they look, how comfortable Super Locky is right now. And a comfortable for Kidden plays into their playstyle where they go and attack, they get the demos and it caused a double commit as well because the demo made the defense really worried about the shot. You might have been looking over towards Locky. I was looking at Kami and it's like RGB klaxons going off in the <laughs> background, letting everyone know it's now DEFCON 1. You cannot be careful. You have to full send it now. Demo from Fever onto Scrub, looking to run downfield with this CJ on the ball, but it's Big bump. away. That's a huge bump on Fever. If Banana got the demo at the same time, it was just a straight goal. It may it almost bounced off everybody and renegades it in. It only just squeaks out. Full we'll send from Fever, he's going towards that net, but Scrub to get it away. He's locked down, Scrub another touch onto it. Lockie a little bit uncomfortable there, but able to turn around and keep within the rotation. Nice adjustments from him. As CJ before wanted to find Fever, but Fever got bumped once again. This is getting physical. It's getting so physical for Kidden uh, and the lead in that regard as well. As for Kidden are the ones doing it while in the offense, while Renegades are trying to set up anything. A miss though, and Kami will capitalize. Renegades for the first time tonight, I'd even argue. Oh, it's a steal. It's a steal. It's a steal. He's <laughs> laughing because CJ got the shot and oh. it just tickled off Kami. However, Kami you know, was the one works. who put in the work over Super Lucky. If they need a steal to bring up that confidence to have a good joke with each other, allow because Renegades, they're finally playing, playing with a lot more pace right now. They're looking a little bit more comfortable down mm -hmm. The defense is a little sus still, Ooh. but 
Could this be their way back in? It just feels like every touch from Forkidden is so hard to read where it's about to go. That must be difficult for Renegades to set in defense. But that's a great pass across. Just appreciate some mush. Squeezing it with the floor fever to find CJ so cleanly. And CJ is going to reward him for his efforts. That's 2-1, Renegades. Fever has hit the top corner as well. Well, there might be a follow-up off the kickoff. It is going to be CJ. But now for Kidden getting put onto low boost. Banana Head has none. Scrub is going to have to go out to that one. It's Super Locky instead. But look, even with zero boost, Banana Head's willing to go down to the other end to take boost and put himself into a passing position. And it's worked out. They're out of defense. He's and in rotation. Chance to score. That is so crazy to break the rotation then to be able to fix and it so it. cleanly, to keep the pressure, to keep the play going, to keep. Scrub a smiling because this is something else. They have no right for Kitten. They were meant to be stuck in defense with no boost. But Banana Head has so much confidence in his teammates that he doesn't need boost. He'll go to the other end and he'll set up an attack out of that defense. For Kitten's mentality is something to behold. When the going gets tough, you just keep on aggressing. Somehow Banana Head gets oh. that out. Locky doesn't get touched, but it just trickles on by Kami, wanting to push that through, but Scrub comes through with the safe. Banana needs to get clearance now. It's a soft touch, but it's picked up by Scrub. Something that uh, Fakin used to do was stack that net. And you can see they've put in so many training hours that even though they don't want to be there and they've been very aggressive, when they are stuck in there, they keep making saves. But CJ knows what's up. He's seen it before and he gets the dunk. Okay, Renegades are back, baby. You can feel it. They're now vibing, but they're not out of the woods just yet. 131 still up on the clock. We're kidding. Only one behind. They're going to double down, surely. Uh, you got to hope that this can continue for the Renegades. Losing this game would certainly put the entire game into forget. The way that they're playing, the chaos that they're making will make it almost impossible to get four goal games in a row against them. So it's very, very important here for the Renegades. Very important for Kidden if they just want to secure it very quickly as well. I wonder what the uh, Wolves are thinking now as well, right? Where they're probably looking at this going, okay, we know we can take down Renegades. Well, Kidden were looking something fierce. So they've probably shaken a little bit, but then to see Renegades rejuvenated, what's got to be going through their minds as they look on to this match and two absolute behemoths are fighting off against each other. But for Kidden, they're the fresh ones there. The unpredictable challenges here. And they keep going forward. They're just backing each other up so well. That one's <laughs> almost a goal. Super lucky coming out of the blind spot and then accidentally bumping his teammate for good measure. If that's not chaos, I don't know what is. I mean, if you want to give for Kid and the slogan of can't stop, won't stop. They just keep on attacking, keep on aggressing. Keep on shooting, but nothing to stick just yet. Final 10 seconds on the clock. Renegades want their fourth, want a little bit of safety. But it's for Kidden on the ball. Say that, Kami goes for the shot. It is kept away by Banana Head in the corner. This cannot be allowed to touch the floor as Banana Head so does fast. get a touch to the ball. That's put to ground. Renegades get a game in the series. There was a chance there at the end, though. You can still see for Kidden always always threatening. You can see as well, Fever likes to keep himself settled. He doesn't like to celebrate mm -hmm. too hard. He wants to stay calm throughout. That is such a change in momentum. And if you're a Renegades fan, a massive sigh of relief has to just be let out because it was looking pretty dire for a moment. But here in game three, that's the team a lot of people out there know and love and showing what they're made of. They they created the opportunities for themselves as well. For Kidden are creating a lot of, of luck mm -hmm. for themselves. It's, it's kind of the CJ mentality of the past where as long as you're in the play, as long as you're going for it, you have a chance. However, it can also create opportunities like that where a mistouch goes through and that 
All that needs is a very solid for, uh, Renegades lineup. All it needs for them is to play consistently, and they should be able to take advantage of those opportunities. Well, it all comes down, for Kinstrom, comes down to them willingly breaking their rotations, yeah. and then one of your teammates leaves the space open for you to step back on in so that it's reformed and nothing is really hurt. For Kidden, haven't really been, well, they were massively demo during that game, but it was just at the wrong times. They were allowing the player to, uh, well, Renegades were allowing the player to keep on aggressing, keep that pressure up on them, so that, that Renegades didn't have that time to break down field. Renegades need to get their demos on the start of their own attacks. It's almost like playing against three mark by eights at the moment, playing against the kid. Just <laughs> all trying to be so fast, all willing to turn. And the beautiful thing is, they're not double committing at the same time. They're getting that communication going and and that's leaving them in a good position even when somebody does go for a wild cut. Yeah, the only time they double commit is in their own net when they sort of have to. You don't have any other option. You need to cover as much space when you're pushed right to that limit. Another shot being put on there. That time by Scrubs and McKinnon trying to keep the pressure alive. Well, that's not the right touch for Kami. Banana Head's going to accept any along the ball, along the ground ball, if given to him, because he can get that chip and chase. He's almost in position as well to get the redirect, and that's a problem. CJ has to just jump up and can't look for a clear. He has to just try and get a touch when normally against anyone else, he wouldn't have to worry about a person being there. Dare I say that Renegades, by the lead of CJ, are starting to read for Kidden. They know this is a very abnormal playstyle, and they're starting to expect what for Kidden will do next. Well, this is certainly something that happened in the past, uh, especially against Ground Zero for Forkidden. They came out with a very, very unique playstyle, a different one, but a, still a unique playstyle then, and then Ground Zero figured it out and took them down. If a kitten haven't learnt the most important skill in Rocket League, how to adapt, then that'll still be a problem, even if the playstyle's different. Did see them adapt against Team Bliss earlier on today, so we know they can do it, but it wasn't, you know, massive blinding adaptations being thrown at them. It wasn't Renegades that seemed pretty much clueless, hopeless, to then turn it around and look, I wouldn't say dominant, but comfortable back in the series. It comes down to for Kitten now to really the rug from underneath their feet. Still see the Fakidden demos coming out. Kind of missed them a little bit in that last game. That could be what tips the favor. Renegades had a bit of an opening, but Banana Head was able to scramble back. I love those. Oh, there we go. I love those as well. Scrub's going to sink it as Fakidden. Super Locky beating one, getting a great angle across too, so Scrub can beat the defender and it goes in at 144 Ks. Halfway mark and it's only one goal. Wonder how the second half of this game is going to unfold. Now is that the floodgates just being opened as Fever launches it downfield, Scrub blocked out by CJ. Rocky can't get to it. Fever with a shot. CJ was going for the bump, but Banana on that bat post to keep it away. It was a smart decision by CJ. You could see he wasn't able to generate anything of his own, but to go leave the ball for Fever behind him and go for the demo, it was the highest percentage play. That's a low percentage play, though. CJ with the own goal. Oh, no. Oh no, indeed, a little mistake there. And it's one of those, you look back on the replay and you don't know how the ball just yeah. throws itself off in that direction. But it is what it is for Kidden 2-0 up. You know what they call a blind deer with no legs? Still no uh, idea. And that was CJ in that play. An own goal, and it couldn't be more telling in how this series will go. There's another one in there for Kitten. They've taken it to three. Yikes. That's all you can say. At both Yummy's joke and, of course, the scoreline right now is this free in favour of the four kittens. Renegades, whilst picking themselves, pulling up their socks and looking big, now have slumped on over for Kitten. A massive. 
And this is what it looked like against Dire Wolves. When things went against them, it really fell apart for the Renegades. A kickoff goal for Forkidden. They have put themselves here on match point. Four goals in the lead. There's no way that they let this slip. Man, what heck it in our sheet right now, yummy. I'm already putting kids down to take the grand finals. They are winning me over right now. Renegades is down to you to say otherwise because it, I don't think it's happening right here. They've got to pull off the Spaceman sweep. They've got to come back and win three in a row. That's a massive task. Got to be very difficult. They've already taken down the best teams in the region. And this is just one more team that would solidify this as the greatest event of their, of their careers so far. A 4-0. And as we were saying earlier, it, it's going to be so hard against a team playing so chaotically to win three games in a row for Renegades. What can Renegades do in the final 45 seconds? Because like I said, this game pretty much is done unless they get a goal right now and then can keep on getting a couple of kickoff goals. Realistically, they need to utilize this time to really figure out how full kid in a plan and then take that into the next one and keep on evolving with time because 30 seconds left to go and you can see they've got the pace. They've got an idea. They just need to somehow take control away from Four Kidden, who are in there and calling it sure right now, but they don't feel stressed. They feel like they're having fun. <laughs> this is all part of the plan. When you're a 15, 16 year old kid, and that's what they are, 15 and 16 on Four Kidden, you are playing for fun. You are having the time of your life, and it doesn't get better than this 4 0ing Renegades to put yourself on match point. As they'd like to tell you, they're currently unsigned. So I'd imagine Yummy, a couple of walks out there suddenly pricking up their ears, looking at this team that looks to be moving on into a top two spot. They're doing a fantastic job this weekend. They're on blast. I mean, taking CJ to a less than 100 point game as well. Banana Head, one of the top scorers of the weekend, continues that. And that's, this is scary because Scrub I felt like he was not necessarily contributing so much the past couple of days when they were still finding all that success. And now Scrub is having one of the best performances of his career. Yeah, thank you for clearing that up. Because when you started that first half of the, uh, of the sentence, I was like, what are you talking about? Scrub is the catalyst to this right now. And whilst, yes, Banana Head's probably going to look like the star player, for me is Scrub just continuously setting up plays, continuously providing so much aggression to the opposition. Lockie's there with a bit more finesse, it's got to be said, and being able to put on some really nice passing plays, but Scrub is just chaotic goodness right now. And Bacon, you said CJ was the best player in OCE, so what's going on over at that end of the pitch? Well, CJ is more so the best player because he gives a little bit more uniform Form play to his team. He keeps them high spirits, keeps them grounded at the same time, and keeps them within the fold. It's going to be that captain role where he's going to have to talk them through this right now. Keep their spirits high, keep Kami and Fever just working at 100%, and just sit back, be the third man, let the boys do the work. Because we've seen him up in attack more so than anything. And I feel that, I feel that Fever wants to get more in attack. He, that's where he'll be properly utilized. Hey, Renegades it's as strange. well. I know. There's been a team in the past that have been able to make comebacks like this. They've been a team that have made some of the biggest comebacks in OC, but it doesn't look like that's the case now. For Kidden, only took him 30 seconds. Oof. Banana had just, what you call it, right place, right time, just turns his car around, probably was looking there, trying to direct himself at the corner boost, quickly puts on ball cam and, oh, well, hello there. Well, I don't know how frustrated you could be, but this is a story of frustration for Renegades. There's there's so many moments here where for Kitten have just gone for something and it's worked out for them. And that can be the hardest team to play against. That can be the biggest uh, loss to your mentality after a game like that. That's 
is all down to the speed that Fakidin are doing it at. But the biggest booster to any mentality would be if Renegades can pull off this game. Pull off the next one. Pull off preferred. Going it up against Iwals. They'll feel like absolute kings of the castle. As Fever does find CJ. Finds Kami above net. Needs to find this through the smoke and does exactly that. Kami getting the equalizer. If there's one man that can step up for Renegades, it is Kami. It's been a long, long time since we said that he was the carry of any team, but we know he has the mechanics. We know he has those solo plays. If he can bring them out, that might be their chance. Okay, that's one goal of many needed for Renegades, I'm sure, because Force Kidden aren't going to stop at one themselves. Banana Head. Lines that one up for Scrub. Lucky was there, but CJ to block him out. Kami to pick up the ball. Looking to run this downfield. Banana does get a block for CJ to set this one up for Fever, who's going for a second dodge into that. Doesn't connect. Banana the runner oh! the whole way. Beat CJ for Kidder back on top. End to end. Super Lucky has found Banana. Banana completely trusting that touch. And CJ caught napping at the other end. That is huge for Forkidden here. Another lead, another early lead, and at all these points of time, a few throughout the entire series, it always feels like Renegades are the ones that have to make up ground. Yeah, Forkidden are just top bumping right now. Every time they get knocked back down, they get up again. It is a continuous cycle for them where they will not stay down. Renegades oh. cannot get a killer blow. That felt like it would have been another goal, could have been another goal. It is cleared away by Fever, but for Kidden are not stressed about it. They were, that would have been an incredible display of creativity from for Kidden. They're playing really close to each other in these corner scenarios. It kind of reminds me of Flipside Tactics in their win at the World Championship Season 2. How they were You're able to age. trust each other so <laughs> well, so close, and there was no chance for the defenders to be able to react. Yeah, up against some mocky esports, you really are pulling out the animals of history right there, yummy. In this modern age, it's for Kid and the young guns that are standing up shouting, your time is over, old man, it is ours to be had. Scrub blocking on our banana onto that. No, Kami just gets the touch and lucky to send it away. Well, for Kid and have already put their name in lights as the youngest team to make a grand final before. Can they be the youngest team to win in RLCS Championship? They're putting themselves in the grand final here at this rate. One minute 40 left. If they keep up the aggression, they can hold on to the lead and take the game. Scrub takes the air, wants to find Banana downfield. It didn't have enough source on it. It didn't have enough power behind. Oh, this is good. The Fever, he can burn up power behind. Whenever there's an open space and a pass opportunity for Renegades, you know that it's going to be something special. They haven't had many openings, but that time Fever finds the gap. This is an excellent story. Any way you look at it, Renegades, struggling and trying to rebuild themselves live in front of your eyes for Kidden on the run of their lifetime any way it falls it will be fantastic that's a nice put up into the air by CJ but Renegades they need a little bit more control I feel oh there's a very close opportunity there Renegades have kept this a lot tighter but even still, Forkidden have been taking more opportunities. And even though it's a tied game, I still feel like Forkidden are in control of this game. Mm -hmm. And if it's not this game, it may be the next. But Kami wants to stop it. He's got the pass across. The CJ plays it carefully. Well, you know what I mean? They do say you got to risk it for the chocolate biscuit. That chocolate biscuit, in this case, being 351 points and 9 thousand dollars in the finals right there wait and be taken that is of course for first place only four and a half thousand for second not a bad bit of money and of course for 16 year olds it's a crazy amount of money well the connection of the passes haven't been there for renegades you've seen them attempt them normally they're pretty crisp out of defense oh that was open i don't know if renegade realized because that could have been the winner right there for Kidden Hold On, and they get it down to the other end. It looks like an overtime is looming. About this, though. 
Fever keeps in contention. CJ is there. The layoff for Fever. Oh, he had to back off out of it. Looking to get a touch there. Kami does keep it alive. Following rule oh, one. Interesting touch. Wanting to throw that across. No one gets it. And for Kidden, one goal. And they could be through to the grand final. You still can't tell where any touch from for Kidden is going to go. Mm -hmm. And that's so huge for it. Both ends of the pitch for Kidden. One goal away from that grand final. Renegades, one goal away from being knocked out. They want to stay in this. Any time that they have an opportunity to make the comeback, they'll still back themselves. CJ wanting to approach that net, but Scrub to the night. Good pass. Two plays were forward, Kami. Oh, hit by Scrub, but none. He needs to get a touch here. Kami was coming for it. Locky. Down towards the corner, buys time and actually chases onto it. Falls out. He got the call from Scrub to demo as well. That's a fucking oh. But he can't get it low enough. Shot oh. Scrub saved by Kami. Oh, I thought that was it, but Kami, a hero for Renegades. He's kept them in it with a pinch off the post. Scrub still trying to create an opportunity here, but now it's created an opening for the Renegades on the counter attack. CJ taking his time, looking for the shot saved by Super Lucky. Both teams knew that that wasn't going to be a goal, but to just slow things down, have a breather. I think Renegades must have got so much boost during that period as well. 1 minute 15 into overtime here. And this Renegades back in the attack, but as I say that quickly, pass it nice. over the Super Locky. CJ with a massive save. You can see that they're willing to play without any nerves, despite it being an overtime, despite it being so close for Kitten. Just do not care what's at stake here. They are playing to their full potential in an overtime to go to the grand final. Oh, cheeky little touch. Nice. And it came, Army, but unfortunately not to be. Banana flicking it, trying to get up over CJ, but he just gets the tips of his fingers to it and Fever to lend a hand to block it on out. Scrub looking for Banana towards the center. The pop, but Banana couldn't get there in time. Strong patience by Scrub, though, has allowed for Kidden to stay more positioned in that forward half, and that's a bit of a boost drainer for Fever. If Banana Head can get a follow-up on this one, which he will, no, he won't get connection. He had that flip, doesn't get around it. Banana Head may turn, no, Super Lucky's gonna take it slow. Look for this opportunity. He's got the air dribble, blocked again by Renegades. You can see that four kid and one of 50-50 to be dropped right in front of that net, but as a good answer, Renegades are putting these 50-50s to go high there. Team for Kidden off. They have got the smarts to be able to handle this team. But the issue right now is that can they weather the continuous attacks? And it is for Kidden with control of the ball. Super lucky oh, to drop it down. It's well oh, met. Banana. But that touch from Banana Head us is sending for Kidden through to the grand finals. For Kidden to have done it. They may not be the goats right now, but they are the kids. They go to the grand final. They do it taking down both Renegades and Ground Zero through this lower bracket. You can see an exhausted Super Locky right there trying to catch his breath. He doesn't even believe it's happened, but it has for Kidden. The new kids on the block are going up against Diwolves in the grand finals. Renegade, another top team, has fallen to the four Kidden squad.